So, dann erstmal herzlich willkommen. Ähm, ich hatte euch ja im letzten Beine-Video äh, erzählt, dass wir einen Workshop hier geplant haben. Und der ist auch stattgefunden oder der hat stattgefunden. Da ging es um Pull-Ups und Dips. Es hatte äh, mehr so einen Seminarcharakter. Also wir haben uns die Theorie sehr detailliert angeguckt, ähm, über das Training und Programming gesprochen. Und ähm, mir hat das super viel Spaß gemacht. Ähm, das Feedback von den Teilnehmern war sehr geil. Ähm, es geht ja im Endeffekt nur um eine kleine Gruppe, weil ja, wie ihr hier seht, wir haben ja jetzt auch gar nicht so viel Platz. Und ich hätte auf jeden Fall Bock, äh, weitere Seminare und Workshops zu machen. Das nächste, was mir vorschwebt, äh, wäre auf jeden Fall ein Planned Workshop, weil ja, das mein absoluter Lieblingsskill ist und ich halt den auch den Leuten gerne näher bringen möchte, genau erklären möchte, welche Theorie steht hinter der Planche, wie trainiere ich das, was sind die wichtigen ähm, Techniken, die man beachten muss, wie trainiere ich das auch, um vor allem verletzungsfrei zu bleiben und ähm, langfristig dort Erfolge zu haben. Und wenn ihr Bock auf so ein ähm, planche seminar workshop habt, äh, dann schreibt es mal in die Kommentare, ähm, wo ihr herkommt. Ähm, und das Ganze würde natürlich hier in Berlin stattfinden und ob das für euch möglich wäre. Und ähm, dann finden wir da auf jeden Fall einen Termin. Ich habe auf jeden Fall Bock drauf. Und jetzt äh, viel Spaß mit dem Video. Die nächste kleine Sache, die ich noch sagen möchte, ist, dass ich ab jetzt auch Personal Trainings im Calisthenics Concepts Gym anbiete. Das heißt, wenn du aus dem Raum Berlin kommst und an... Planches, Front Levers, Muscle Up, Weighted Calisthenics oder generell im Bereich Calisthenics an dir, deinen Skills und deiner Optik arbeiten möchtest, ähm, dann kannst du jetzt, den Link findest du in der Beschreibung, ähm, einen Termin vereinbaren und dann können wir hier zu zweit in geiler privater Atmosphäre an deinen Zielen arbeiten und ich freue mich. So, guys, um Yeah, pretty new format. I am, um, yeah, trying out with you, and yeah, just tell me at the end if you liked it. And the idea is that I analyze my workouts for you to give you the maximum information and the maximum output. Why I train what and what are my points where I keep an eye on, and yeah, I just want to tell you how I try to improve and how I adjust my workouts over time. And I'm already sorry for the video quality. Um, my PC is not fast enough to yeah, record it in original quality. So it could be that the video uh, <coughs> stops at some points or is not that fast. Um, I try to fix that, but I can't guarantee that it will be fixed uh, soon. And I also made some notes to give you uh, the maximum input. and. Yeah, for the first example video, um, I recorded my last upper body day. You already saw it in the video like two weeks ago, I think. Um, but this day has just the, the most variety because I train weighted, I train skills, and I train um, on the bench. So, um, yeah, there is a lot to say, actually, with this workout. So, yeah, let's just start with the handstand push-ups. And what can I say about the handstand push-ups? I started this workout cycle like five weeks ago and started with 12 reps. On handstand push-ups, I plan with total reps. Um, this is because I can't be sure that in every session I can make sets of three, sets of five, sets of four, because uh, balance is my limiting factor. So I try to reach a total number of reps and At the moment, I am at 15 reps. In this workout, I did five, five, three, and two reps. And yeah, balance is just my limiting factor. And that's why I plan with total reps and try to increase the reps over time. What I also focus on is going um, below 90 degree in the elbows so that I am here in this area that I yeah just push deep enough um, That's also why I use uh, the handles to have more range of motion to target my shoulders even more. So yeah, as you can see here also, I had a lot of struggle with the balance and yeah, keeping the core tight is pretty hard for me, but it's getting better every week and on some days, handstands are just impossible. I think you know the feeling. 
So afterwards, um, I started a superset of planche holds and front lever pull-ups. And on planches, I really focus on the form. Um, a lot of you guys ask me why I um, work with like really easy progressions. That is just because um, I need yeah, easy progressions to keep the technique. And what I focus on is keeping the, the posterior pelvic tilt in this area. So to focus on pressing my hips down and don't have these ugly hollow back planches that a lot of guys do. And of course, to focus on uh, shoulder protraction and retraction and not retraction, depression. So keeping my shoulders away from the ears and pressing them down to get these hollow position in the upper back, which just looks amazing. And the planche is uh, followed by front lever pull-ups. And I don't work with holds here because I'm not really interested in long front lever holds. Um, I'm more interested in front lever pulls. And what I focus on at the moment is uh, pulling height. So I try to get my hips to the bar, as you can see here. And at the beginning of the cycle, I started with tuck pull-ups. And once I managed the tuck pull-ups, I got four sets of advanced tuck pull-ups. And now the first two sets, as you will see, are um, one leg pulls. And then followed by advanced tuck pulls because I can't um, yeah, just pull high enough during all sets when I work with one legs. So yeah, the superset is also a great um, option to save some time in your workout and planche and front lever complement each other pretty good because they're like uh, the antagonists. So yeah, you don't get, you don't feel the fatigue from the planche in the front lever so you can combine them pretty good. And here you can see in the second set, the first rep was really good and the second already has like 10 centimeters missing. So in the set afterwards, um, yeah, I use an easier progression. On uh, planches, I also don't really um, work with longer hold times. Um, I just try to increase the leverage over the weeks because I, uh, I actually never work with holds over five seconds or pretty rarely because it just don't work for me. Uh, I need the little higher intensities here, but this can be totally different for you. Yeah, as I told you, and the uh, set number three and set number four, I go down to uh, advanced tuck pulls just to reach the, the pulling height again. And yeah, what I also work on is, what you can see pretty good here, is to work on a proper retraction. So to bring my shoulders back and on a depression to bring my shoulders down. And this improved a lot because, yeah, I just left the ego at home and worked with easier progressions and also did a lot of accessory work, which also brings me to the, to the next exercise. This is, or this are weighted pull-ups. And on weighted pull-ups at the moment, I totally don't focus on weights. That's why I also just have 40 kg on the belt, but I focus a lot on technique. I did uh, four sets of five reps, and what I focus on the most is elbow path, shoulder depression, and shoulder retraction. And this has yeah, two major reasons. Reason number one is to have a really nice carryover to um, one-arm pull-ups and front levers. And the second reason is to feel my back muscles better and to keep the shoulders healthy at the same time. And you can see in the first set that I was not very satisfied with. Um, once I go up, you can see my elbows moving backwards a lot. And this is what I want to avoid. I want to really work on my arm adduction so to keep the elbows stationary under the bar and adduct them because in one arm pull-ups, that is what you need. You don't pull one arm pull-ups like this or like this. You want to have your elbow close to your body and bring your elbow to the zeratos. So you want to have a strong arm adduction with a controlled elbow path. And the same is valid for the shoulders. I don't want them 
to rotate up. So I don't want to have an elevation. I want to have a depression and a slightly retraction. And that is what I focus on the most. So as you can see in the second set now, I directly uh, try to fix it and have a way better elbow path and a better shoulder activation. So here you can see now when you focus on my elbows, they actually don't move backwards anymore because yeah, I force that external rotation more and just focus more and you have directly a better contraction and a better feeling in the lats and yeah, that is why I do the pull-ups, how I do them at the moment. Actually pretty simple and if you have similar goals, um, I definitely recommend you to uh, yeah, get the weights down and work on proper pulling technique. And here you can see uh, Flex doing my Insta game. <laughs> so yeah, follow me on Instagram. I will put you the link in the description and there you have more content. So after the pull-ups, there are of course the weighted dips in my upper body session. On weighted dips, I'm actually pretty satisfied with my technique. And so I focus more on the weight part on this exercise. I started the cycle with three times 77.5 kg times six reps and ended up in this session with um, three times six reps with 90 kg. And I started with a really high reps in reserve to just have the possibility of a longer cycle. So because if I would have started with like one rep in reserve or more, um, then yeah, I would have needed a deload like two weeks afterwards or three weeks afterwards. And I want to have a long block um, and don't want to deload that often. So I kept the buffer high and yeah. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, the plan was to hit RPE seven, so three reps in reserve. In the first two sets, I definitely managed it. And the last set still was like two reps in reserve, which is a volume PR for me. I never made it to three times, six times, 90 kg before. Depth could be a little more, but for more depth, I would just had need more um, range of motion in my hips. So I would like have to, when I go down, just push the hips lower because my shoulder mobility won't allow me to go deeper by the shoulders. So in the end, that range of motion is, yeah, not important for me because it has no benefits. It would just be for competitions to be valid. So that is the second set with still a lot of reps in reserve. It was pretty easy, as you can see, and followed by the last set where I got the 90 kg for six reps with roundabout RP8, which is enough to say that next week I definitely will it increase to probably um, 92.5 kg. Um, because I don't want to force too much. If I increase about like five kg, this would be maybe too much. And then I overshoot and need a deload. So I keep it easy and work in simple little steps. So yeah, that's for the dips. After, yeah, my main work comes, of course, the accessory part of the workout. And for my Pulling game, I really like to uh, include Gironda pull-ups. Um, I change them from time to time with Bulgarian pull-ups. Um, Bulgarian pull-ups I use mainly to work on the arm reduction because on Bulgarian pull-ups you keep the elbows out a little more and that gives you a great chance to have a full arm reduction. And Gironders I do to yeah, really learn how to properly use my shoulder blades and how to activate them. As you can see, you need to pull them down and squeeze them together during the whole movement. And this is super hard to keep. They are so exhausting. And at the same time, you combine um, a rowing motion with a vertical pulling motion. You, you have the vertical pull and then you have kind of a rowing motion. So it's also a really great back developer exercise. So yeah. I definitely recommend this exercise for more advanced athletes um, due to the 
retraction and depression work. As you can see in this position, you also have a huge carryover to uh, front levers because as you can see, the position is just super similar. So you will definitely uh, benefit from this exercise if you execute it uh, properly. I did three sets of it, um, six reps. And yeah, I progress in this exercise with reps. So next week I probably do seven, six, six, and the week after seven, seven, six, and so on and so on. And yeah, that's basically why I do it. I like to do it um, on the rings, and not on the bar, just to have my um, wrists always in the most comfortable uh, position for me. This is, yeah. For me, the best option because it avoids pain in elbows, shoulders, and wrists, and this is definitely a recommendation from me for you. Um, if you want these awesome Via Fortis rings, you can definitely get them um, over my link. If you buy them over my link, I get a commission, and you can support my channel. So yeah. After the pull accessory work, I also do a push accessory work, and that is the bench press at the moment. Um, in the past, I never really benched frequently because I didn't like it or I didn't like it, but at the moment, I highly enjoy it. I also don't really expect a, a huge carryover to dips or something. I just want to do more work for my chest, and yeah, I just enjoy bench press at the moment. And since I never did it and never really worked with a horizontal pressing motion, I, because I also never did push-ups and stuff like this, um, yeah, these chest gains uh, can't be bad. And even though I don't do them for a carry carryover, I think they will have a good carryover. Um, also, I like start to understand how to use proper technique, how to use the leg drive, and I am now also able to yeah, like as you can see here, to keep my shoulders down and to have a good bar path and to keep my elbows in place and they don't rotate in the back anymore, which is a problem that you see um, on most people in the gym that bench, that they just yeah let their elbows move. Now we can see the same thing from the top position again. I use a pretty narrow grip because I am stronger in narrow grip which basically comes from me dipping all the time. So I'm really strong in the, in the more narrow grips. And yeah, here again, you can see I force the external rotation and then go down and try to keep my elbows in place and my shoulders down and of course retracted. And yeah, you can see the chest is working nicely. And I also feel this exercise pretty good in my chest, which yeah. Just make this uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> and that was basically the, the main part of the workout. And after this, um, what I do is some not planned isolation work on this day. Um, I did biceps curls on some days. I do uh, lateral raises on other days. I do like triceps work. This is, um, yeah. Basically, also not the important volume because, um, yeah, the main work is done in, in the multi-joint lifts and these are just like small per percentages to work on weaknesses or like aesthetic goals. So don't focus too much on the isolation work and, yeah, do what, what is the most fun for you or what you like the most and this will most likely also get you the, the best benefit. And yeah, that's it. That was the, the first video in this style. I hope you, you liked me talking about my own workouts and explaining you why I train like I train. And yeah, if you want to support this channel, of course, leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscription. And if you're interested in programs where you have like all this done for you, then definitely check out the king of weighted programs. Um, link is also in the description. And with this programs, you can't go wrong if you're interested in calisthenic skills. Sorry for that. Weighted calisthenics and also the basics of barbell lifting or like gym stuff. 
all these is combined in these programs and yeah if you're interested in this definitely check this out or yeah send me a message and i will answer you all the questions you have regarding the program so see you in the next video